The whole, the whole situation was basically, they have money, we want it, we're gonna do what we need to do to take it. It's hard to look like this and to make the type of money that we make and for people to understand that you're doing something legit. You know? They see a young black man with money and automatically they think drug dealer or they think something nefarious, some type of nefarious activity going on. And in actuality, I'm just making music, you know, so. Last year around probably like May-ish, we was on the way to a show in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we was coming through South Carolina, and um, we were pulled over. The officer said he pulled us over for driving too slow in the passing lane. It was me, my photographer, and my videographer um, in the vehicle. The officer um, called the backup K-9 unit, and they came and ran the dog around the car. And um, they searched the car, and I had $8,000 in my bag that I was um, sleeping on. And um, they took my money. When it came down to it, my videographer had like some personal use of uh, marijuana, which is uh, legal here, of course, but not there. And um, he put my money with his weed like it was a drug transaction or something like that. And ended up um, getting a lawyer, and it, it was—it's been a year process. I've just now got my money back, like this year. They can say that they don't discriminate when it comes to stuff like that, but the numbers speak for it. Itself. Like they say, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. There's not no more black people driving cars than there are white people, but you have more black people being pulled over, stopped, served, seized. You know, like the saying, like you don't beat the house, the casino, like you can't beat the house. It's like that with the law, you really can't beat them people. Like they let some people slip through the cracks, like I myself, they let me slip through, but you gotta look at the countless people who didn't never get their stuff back, you know. Um, it wasn't even fair to me because the stuff I had to go through to get my money back wasn't even worth getting the money back, to be honest. It was just the principle with me. <laughs> I just try to do me, you know what I'm saying, provide for my family and pursue my own dream with this uh, music. There is an inherent conflict of interest, I think. When law enforcement is in a position making a judgment call about a large amount of money and whether they're going to take it or not. I have people all the time telling me, you're never gonna win the drug war. I said, maybe not, but it didn't have anything to do with how hard we're gonna fight. We're just trying to make our county safer. Um, we're trying to get the word out that this is not the place you wanna drive through for those things, and it's, it's been effective. The whole, the whole situation was basically, they have money, we want it, we're gonna do what we need to do to take it. I've never really got on my feet since this, since all this began. It's not a whole lot of money, but to a poor boy, it's a lot of money. This isn't about righting some universal wrong. This is about money, and this is about law enforcement agencies to fund projects and be able to honestly say that they didn't use taxpayer money. They didn't use tax money to fund this. Well. They use somebody's money. Civil asset forfeitures are, it's a process by which the government can seize assets, usually money, from someone when they believe that those assets are directly related to the drug trade, whether it's you know, distribution or trafficking or something like that. It's the sheriff's office. All this money goes back to putting some more drug dealers in jail. The way the law is written, they can then turn hey, around and use that take. money, or they can sell can't that take. TV or sell that car, and then use the money from that to fund their department. So, you know, it's a 
bit of a conflict of interest there where law enforcement, it's a way for them to raise money for their own projects. I don't think there's a way to tell how many people that you may keep from taking that last injection or smoking that last bit of whatever that'll kill you. Cause, you know, because there's, there's a lot of drug runners up and down our highways. You, know, you may get them, you may save somebody, you never know. Some people just don't really like it that we can take cash, but it's just easy if you don't want us to confiscate your money, don't be affiliated with drugs and we won't bother your money. One of the reasons this is really problematic is the law is written so that this is a this happens on the civil side of things, and that's kind of technical. But what it means is uh, because this is a civil action, you don't have that due process right, which means you don't get a public defender. If you can't afford to hire an attorney to represent your interests, you won't have one. And Honestly, in my experience, the most common thing is it's like 500 bucks. It's like, you know, it's, it's a very small, in the grand scheme of things, a very small amount of money. But the amount of trouble that the person would have to go through to get it back outweighs, you know, the, what, what that amount of money is in the first place. So they just kind of throw their hands up. It was about 7.15 in the morning. And I come up to the intersection of the road, and there were like three cop cars at the intersection. Yeah, I had about $5,600 in some change on me. I told him, I said, man, I said, this, this money's not even my money. I said, this is money that people's paid down on cars and stuff to get them worked on. I mean, you know, $6,000 is not a lot of money, but to a poor guy that, 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 that works for about $500 a week, that's a lot of money. You know, it says on their car they are protect, to protect and to serve. They're nothing about that. They're nothing about that. It's what can we get on you? What can we hold to you? What, what can we get out of you? You know, like they're saying, like you don't beat the house. The casino, like you can't beat the house. It's like that with the law. You really can't beat them people. It's hard to look like this and to make the type of money that we make and for people to understand that you're doing something legit. You know? They see a young black man with money and automatically they think drug dealer or they think something nefarious, some type of nefarious activity going on. And in actuality, I'm just making music. You know? I we was on the way to a show in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we was coming through South Carolina and um, we were pulled over. They searched the car and I had $8,000 in my bag that I was um, sleeping on. And um, they took my money. They can say that they don't discriminate when it comes to stuff like that, but the numbers speak for it. There's not no more black people driving cars than there are white people, but you have more black people being pulled over, stopped, searched, seized. They let some people slip through the cracks, like I myself, they let me slip through, but you gotta look at the countless people who didn't never get their stuff back, you know? Um, it wasn't even fair to me, because the stuff I had to go through to get my money back wasn't even worth getting the money back, to be honest. The question I would pose is, if it's a possession charge, not a trafficking charge, not a distribution charge, not a manufacturing charge, if it's a possession charge, then where's the enterprise? Um, but because those decisions don't have to be related to each other, you don't have to, the, you know, law enforcement doesn't have to answer for that. Sure, if you, could, if you could somehow make some magical system where you know for a fact that you have taken, you know, the, the, that you took this from the worst drug dealer on the planet, fine. But 
that doesn't exist. We're talking about human beings working in an imperfect system. Mistakes are gonna be made, and I think that you have to err on the side of we, our government does not take people's property. I want to be there for my kids so they can smile. I've been on the road doing so for a while. Told my girl be patient, stay loyal and hold it down. We were just sleeping on air mattresses on the floor. Now we up in condos with the pool on the top floor. When you get money, everybody play you close, but don't nobody want to with it.